Play. I'm Michael from BuyAndShoot.com. We're here today at the front of the uh, Digital Show 2012 in Melbourne, where the doors are just about to open. 30,000 people plan to pass through these doors in the next three days. Let's go in and have a look at the latest and greatest in digital photography. I'm going to go now, get a head start before the doors actually do officially open. Alrighty, we're here on the Fujifilm stand with Warwick Williams, talking all things uh, for the new X-Series. Warwick, tell us what we need to know. Tell us all about the X-Pro1 and everything around it. Well, the X-Pro1 is certainly getting a lot of press at the moment and it's a fantastic camera. Uh, on the stand we've actually got uh, a, a, a complete setup and uh, quite a number of these. Uh, so I've got the new flash here which works extraordinarily well. Uh, and this is actually the camera I use at the moment. Uh, I've just upgraded it with the latest firmware and it is running really well. Yeah, so I'm very happy with it and much faster, uh, in particular manual focus. Uh, we also have here uh, a little experiment I'm doing, not officially Fuji, but I've got a, a 30 year old lens on our brand new X-Pro1 and I'm actually very surprised at how easily uh, the camera adapts to this and the, the manual focus works particularly well. Uh, so I think the, the X-Pro1 is going to be a very useful device, not just for your pro photographers, but for all those people that have you know, stacks of old lenses hidden away in their cupboards. Uh, we also have something else new, uh, certainly what I like to say is the most popular camera in the world over the last year, the X100. Now uh, we've actually got the brand new, it's the only one currently, wide angle adapter. So if you've ever wanted to shoot a 28mm shot with your X100, this is it beautifully made it truly is and uh, just uh, turns the camera it gives that little bit of uh, extra ability to shoot those wide angle shots so again all very high quality Fujinon lenses finally I guess uh, we've just got my uh, interesting adaption of the XS1 here which I've discovered shoots really good video as well as stills so I've actually set my one up here with a, a bracket that allows me literally to do both. So I have uh, an external mic plugged into it. Uh, we've got the EF42 flash on here for great still shots. And just yesterday added a, a studio light on there as well. And this is actually quite well balanced. It's actually very easy to use and shoots extraordinarily good video uh, and of course great quality stills. Uh, not often you find something you can actually uh, do for uh, such a, a low price uh, that is actually made in Japan too. Alrighty, we're here on the Wacom stand with Leo and he's telling us all things to do with interactive uh, tablets to aid photographers. Leo, can you tell us what we've got here? Yeah, what we've got here is the uh, Cintiq 24 HD. Um, a lot of the uh, users of photography are custom to Wacom tablets in a traditional sense like the Inchios, um, but uh, this is the one that's actually got a screen built in. Uh, the good thing about this is you can actually directly work on a screen, so all your stroke is basically on there. Um, when you uh, use a normal pen or a normal mouse uh, or a touchpad, all your stroke is always going to be constant with pressure, but with um, having a graphics tablet, you can actually adjust it by how hard you're pressing to increase the, the size of a brush. You can actually increase the, uh, the um, opacity as well and darkness. So when you actually um, doing your dodge and burn in the uh, photographic sense, you can actually uh, basically have uh, doing really, really gradual changes and the harder I press, the darker it becomes. Uh, absolutely perfect for a workflow. Fantastic. How resistant is the screen to fingerprints? These are actually made by glass, so they're very uh, robust. Um, obviously it's not as strong as a diamond ring, so take off your jewellery and uh, should be right. Um, there's other different features as well on the, on, the, on the unit itself. You've got all these controls that allow you to zoom in. You can actually change your brush size, make it smaller, make it bigger as well. So yeah, absolute must. Uh, absolute pro, pro, pro photographers. Beautiful, making life easy for photographers. I'm here with Matthew from ASO and we're talking all things professional monitors for photographers. Matthew, tell me, what have we got on show today? Well, ASO have uh, come to the party with some great new products. Uh, we've rationalised our product line to reduce the number of products so intensify the flavour of each one. The 27 inch and 24 inch class are clearly uh, the winners in today's market and uh, they come packed with uh, photography features uh, to smooth the way uh, to accurate colour rendition. Excellent. Hmm. 
Uh, this is a, a CG245W and the key point of this is that the calibration centre is actually built in. If you can see there's a little indentation here, really uh, you simply schedule the software to calibrate on a, on, on a frequency and it just does it, it turns itself on in the middle of the night and calibrates. So you can get back to what you do best which is photography. We're on their uh, Epson stand having a look at the latest and greatest for photographers. Craig, what's the big hero for the show today? Well our big hero for the show today is the Shorelab D3000. It's our first uh, dry lab imaging system using our most advanced technologies, the micro piezo inkjet technology along with our ultrachrome K3 ink set. I'm here on the Olympus stand with Quet, who knows all things about Olympus and he's going to tell us about three different series going on. Uh, Quet, you've got the OMD to begin with, That's tell true. us about it. Yes, well it's the new camera from Olympus, it is the OMD, this model is called the EM5 and there's some really fantastic features that you'll find in this particular camera. First things first is the electronic viewfinder, 1.44 megapixels and the great thing about it, it, it does give you a what you see is what you get experience. So any changes that you make to the exposure is actually seen through that electronic viewfinder before you even take a photograph. Great thing too, we are using a new 16 megapixel live MOS sensor and we also do have the world's first five-axis image stabilization system which does work in both stills and video which is absolutely fantastic add on to the fact that this is the fastest focusing camera on the market shoots at nine frames a second very quick autofocus absolutely fantastic camera okay what we also have is the new TG1 which is the brightest lens on a tough camera on the market. It uses an f2 lens. So when you're underwater, and generally speaking, there's not very much light at all, you're going to be able to take great shots uh, because you have that brighter lens uh, when you're shooting as well. We've got our pen cameras as well in our sections, and the great thing about our stand is that you can get hands-on with the cameras tested out. We've also got our studio set up that we'll be using later today. We're going to have a few model shoots, and we're also going to see uh, a bit of a shootout happen between our full frame, oh, between full frame cameras as well as our new OMD. So there's a lot to look forward to at our stand this year. I'm here with uh, Nick Seger from Nikon, who's here to talk about all things professional photography, digital cameras. Yeah. yeah. Nick, tell us, what have we got going on the scene today? Okay, so day one of the show, we have pretty much all our product range for 2012 here from uh, behind me, D800s and D4, which is more of our high-end pro and enthusiasts range to Nikon Wands, uh, our new uh, interchangeable lens compact system camera. Um, so we've got the J1 and the V1 and all the different lenses and then we have our uh, other digital SLRs, um, we have our Coolpix range here as well, so pretty much everything Nikon and of course all the Nikkor lenses as well, so uh, pretty much something for everyone on the stand. Fantastic, now you've got a, a massive stand here mm. and uh, what have we got to start off with just behind me? We've got oh, the... Look, here, first of all we've got the Nikon One here, this is the Nikon One V1, so uh, this has been hugely successful for us. We announced this back in September and since then you know, it's been going really, really well. So really great camera, very different to anything else in the market with the ability to do things like shoot a video in 1080p and take photos at the same time, full resolution photos at the same time. So heaps of Nikon One, heaps of hands on, lots of product to try out here. And then we also have here a DA which I think is kind of a rarity at the moment. Lots of people will be like to holding one of these at the moment. So it's just behind me here. You can see there's a D800, D800E and D4 section. So uh, yeah, pretty much something for everyone. And again, with our, with, our, with our stand, we always like to get the product be hands-on. So anyone can come along and get hold and have a feel and try, out, try it out before they buy, hopefully. Alrighty, I'm here with Ziv from iFi, who's uh, introducing a new product to Australia that's been around in America for a few years. Ziv, tell us all about it. So it's a card that makes any camera wireless. So this card goes into any SD camera, and most cameras in the market are SD. And the whole idea is just take pictures, have fun with the camera, don't worry about anything else, and just come home, turn your camera on, and everything goes to your computer back home, or you're in the middle of nowhere taking pictures, it's going straight to your phone, Android or iOS, and then from there it's going straight into any sharing site, any PC back home. So, I'll show you a demo. So, I'll take a picture of you, and over here as well, and you'll see how in a few seconds the card will upload straight into my Mac. In fact, it's already there, and I can also be taking pictures with this card which is uploading to my tablet and as I'm taking pictures it's going to my tablet 
and it's going to my phone. So the idea with that is that, again, you're taking pictures with your good camera. The camera has good imaging and it's unconnected. Smartphones are connected but have poor imaging. So what we do for, for good cameras is we connect them so you have the exact same experience as you have with your smartphone with your normal point and shoot or DSLR. These cards also do geolocation. They also have um, endless, which means that as you take pictures, the card knows that all the old content has already been transferred to your PC or any sharing site. It'll offload your old content to make room for new content. So you actually never run out of space. So you go to your birthday party, and it's always taking pictures. Uh, these cards are selling in Australia as of today. We're actually uh, launching here. They're 60, 100, and 120 uh, Australian dollars. Fantastic. It sounds like an amazing product, and I'm sure we'll take this country by storm. All righty. Thank you. I'm here with uh, George Saad from SanDisk, who's going to tell us all things about great memory cards for professional photographers. Absolutely, Michael. Nice to meet you, finally. So, uh, you know, let, me, let me just quickly first say that, uh, you know, from a company standpoint, what we're trying to achieve at this show in particular is to educate not only industry, but the consumers about where the trends are moving in performance cards. As content and the usage of high-performance uh, cameras, uh, from digital still to tablets to smartphones grows, that's where we are in our niche, right, from a company standpoint. The two fundamental growth areas and push from our brand is in uh, Extreme Pro cards and also in SSD hard drives from a company standpoint. So what I've got in my hand here is the uh, Extreme Pro. What you'll notice about this card where consumers don't actually uh, understand today is what you get out of it when you're using a high premium end camera or a high end premium tablet or smartphone. What this designer do ultimately is so as a consumer you can get, uh, it's 95 megabits per second download in read write, so it's a fast performing speed on the market. Um, and what you're trying to capture, especially on an emotional standpoint, you want to be able to capture from a burst mode or from uh, you know, any moment of movement, you want to be able to grab that moment, store it, keep it and then move from there. And ultimately that's what we're trying to um, portray back to the consumer and say, listen, why buy something second class? Buy the best you can get on the market. So that's the ultimate goal set by pushing and driving Extreme Pro cards today. Now, um, in regards to SSD, as the consumer demand grows for uh, usage of PCs, what we're trying to achieve ultimately on the market today is faster, quieter, less heating, um, security, storage while they're using their machines. And that's what SSD does. Sand has just launched Extreme lineup in SSDs and already within three months in Australia, I've taken market leadership in this country and you'll see this continue to grow from our standpoint moving forward. Fantastic, sounds like uh, Sandisk got a, uh, a number of fronts covered. Absolutely, Michael. And, you know, from, a, from a, one thing I usually say to consumers is that ultimately any company today that specializes in a, in a field, you'll see them strengthen their positioning in time to come. Because what we'll do, we'll challenge ourselves on how we improve technology moving forward. I'm on the Pentax stand here today with Clem Kennedy, who knows all things Pentax. We're here to have a look at the KO1. Clem, tell us all about it. Thank you, Michael. Uh, the K01 is our new interchangeable mirrorless camera, and there are really two unique things about this camera. Uh, just pick one up here. Firstly, um, the design. The design of this camera has been a collaboration project done together with a renowned Australian designer by the name of Mark Newson. Mark is of course widely known in his, as his work uh, as the creative director of Qantas Airways um, and the various work he's done across a vast number of different industries. Uh, in particular, he's known for the Lockheed lounge chair he designed, a single chair that recently sold at auction for $1.7 million. Um, the other unique thing about this camera, other than its design, is the fact that it uses a traditional Pentax K-mount. Unlike other mirrorless cameras from other manufacturers, who have come up with a new mount system, the Pentax calls on our DSLR history and you can use any Pentax lens ever made on this camera. And with more than 50 years of lens history, there's quite a vast number of those lenses out there to call on. That's some excellent versatility you got right there then. Thank you, Michael. Um, then the, the perhaps the other model that I would like to talk about today or unveil today is our new mid-level DSLR, the K30. Now we have this model on here on here today at the digital show for the first time anywhere in the world. And the really exciting thing about this camera is that it, it comes 
uh, with full weather seals, meaning you can shoot in the rain or adverse weather conditions. Um, beyond uh, beyond its uh, design and and the weather seals, um, it comes with all the standard features we've come to know and love from Penax SLRs, such as shake reduction uh, built into the camera body, meaning that any lens you put on this camera can in fact become a stabilised lens. Um, it's also cold proof to minus 10 degrees, making it the real ideal outdoor camera. And just one last feature that I would like to highlight that's unique about this camera is the batteries it uses. It comes with a rechargeable lithium-ion battery, but you can also use AA batteries in this as well, which makes it great when you're traveling, you don't have your charger, and you just want to chuck some double A's in there and get ready to go, you know, it offers that extra level of versatility that no other camera maker on the market has today. Um, so, we're very excited to be launching these two new models here, Michael. And, um, yeah, please have a look, enjoy. I'm on the Tamarack stand today with Stuart Pickerskill, who's here to tell us all things about photography bags for professionals down to amateurs. Thanks, Michael. Uh, as you just said, Tamarack have a full range of bags to cater from the uh, the very compact cameras right up to uh, to professional DSLR with big lenses, etc. Um, we have four new bags in the range to show you. The uh, sorry, the new uh, Zuma 9 Secure Traveller. Now, the beauty of this one, as I said, is it's called the Secure Traveller. So, if you're a, a photographer that's travelling, uh, say, on a uh, you know like a, a packed train or something like that and you want to secure your, your product, you can't actually access your gear from behind here. So your bag sits on your back, you slide it around the front, drop it down like this and then you access your gear from uh, from the top here uh, and that's giving you full access to your, to your system. You've got a rain cover if you're travelling in the rain. Um, yeah. So absolutely no zips on the front? No zips on the front so nobody can access your gear while travelling in uh, sort of crowded areas. So the Zoom and 9 Secure Traveller that one is. Retail on that one's $129.99. Fantastic, fantastic. What have you got next in the range to show us? Uh, fashion stakes, we've got the, uh, the new Aria range. Uh, two sizes, the Aria 3 and the Aria 6, and also three colours, the nice uh, green, brown and black. Um, they're more a, a fashion style, uh, inconspicuous, I guess, style bag. Caters for uh, full SLR with a couple of lenses, maybe uh, an iPad in the back here, your iPhone in the front or your and uh, yeah, it just doesn't look like a normal bag, so a little bit less uh, conspicuous there. Allowed you to blend in with crowd. Absolutely. Um, for the more professional style, we've got the new uh, Cyberpacks here, the Cyberpack Rolling, which is uh, more a full system bag. You can use that uh, travelling either uh, you know on airlines or uh, as you walk around with your heavy equipment, and that's fully uh, full system. Um, you know, top access, forward access. Um, you've got your, your backpack style as well. The, uh, the Cyberpack Telephoto, uh, so that's specifically designed for a DSLR with an extremely uh, long telephoto lens. So your SLR sits in the top here with the, uh, with the, the long lens, so more sporting uh, type professional photographer. So uh, yeah, that's the new bags from Tamarack. Fantastic, it sounds like you're well covered. And you've also got uh, compact Full compact options bags, as a through to uh, through through to the uh, the full professional DSLR style. Been in business 20 years, uh, cleaning camera lenses. Uh, what we have to clean the lens, how we do it, is we have a pen with a natural goat hair brush on one end. Uh, you just want to remove any dust or loose particles first. Uh, put that back on the other end of the pen. Uh, screw cap with a flexible rubber tip with a leather chamois. Uh, on the chamois is a carbon compound. Now what carbon does is it has the ability to absorb fingerprint oil. Uh, in the old days people used to use newspaper to clean fingerprints. How they would do that is with, uh, or they would use newspaper to clean fingerprints. Uh, and why that would work is because there was carbon in the printer's ink. So, uh, as you can see, this so the fingerprints? It's the fingerprint oil. Put the cap back on, then there's a little foam tip inside loaded with more carbon. Uh, so when you screw the cap on, it recharges the pen. Uh, good for five to six hundred cleanings out of a lens this size. Fantastic. 
Uh, and then uh, what we have is uh, same idea, different pens, uh, slightly different tip sizes. If you have little point and shoots or areas that the original lens pen won't get into. Uh, and that's it. That's what we do. We clean fingerprints. Fantastic. Now, you've also got a, a lens pen to clean iPads as well. It's on show down there. Yeah, we designed this. Just, this is just coming out now. Uh, same idea. It doesn't have a brush, but for the fingerprints, we have a, a pad uh, loaded with carbon. And just don't be afraid to apply any pressure on the screen. Uh, the carbon does all the work. And uh, you get a screen this size, 150 cleanings out of the unit. Uh, put it back in, recharges. So provided there's no scratches, you return the screen to new? Yeah, no, it's it's been proven. I mean, we, we Nikon uses our pen. They brand our pen. Canon puts their name on our pen. Uh, like I said, we've been around 20 years now. Um, sold thousands of pens. I'm chatting with Andrew Giles about all things photography and how Canon are going to change the world with both photography and video. Andrew, tell us about the 5D Mark III. Hey Michael, yeah the 5D Mark III, I think everybody uh, had really been waiting for this camera to hit the market, following on of course from the 5D Mark II, which was the camera that really got um, movie making with an SLR camera on the map. And this is a successor and uh, this is at the digital show. We've got 20 metres of Canon uh, EOS uh, counterfeit here because of the popularity of the range, so um, plenty of opportunity for people to get their hands on this one. Fantastic, and now what's in the window? It's behind glass, it's got to be special. Behind us uh, is basically uh, Canon's uh, major launch into the motion picture production industry. So this is a full, uh, full-blown uh, movie-making camera, Cinema EOS, as it's called, and uh, it's a full production kit for uh, movie making, motion picture, TV broadcast, based on the 5D Mark II. Fantastic! And you've also got uh, one more in photographic, uh, the Hero camera. Tell us more about that. That's right, so we've also got the 1DX, the EOS 1DX, which is the professional uh, camera, the ultimate in speed and quality for professionals, really uh, combining both the benefits of, of speed for, uh, for you know, sport and those sorts of applications, as well as the high quality of a full, full frame uh, sensor in an SLR camera. Beautiful, and have you got any other uh, ranges to cover? Well look, I think uh, this year is uh, Canon's 75th year, we've got it covered from capture to output, and this year uh, at the stand, uh, we're featuring the full high definition uh, photo book capability of uh, Canon's inkjet printing technology as well as high definition large format canvas prints as well. So we've got everything covered from uh, cameras right through to hanging uh, high quality pictures up on your walls. We're here with Niels from uh, Professional Photo Lab The Edge in Melbourne. Niels has got a new product for us to show. Yes, we've uh, become the agent, Australian agent, for an American company called White House Colour. Um, first time their products, or their products are available in Australia if you want to deal directly with them, but uh, we've become their agent and you can order them through our new website which is about to be released in the next couple of days. Fantastic. Can we have a, have a closer look at them? Yeah, for sure. You'll see that the quality of the product is quite exceptional. It's uh, for the price you're paying. It's a... Uh, which I can check here. This is about a 60-sided uh, album completely finished including GST is only three hundred and forty dollars. Fantastic. So we're talking professional wedding photographers? Professional, professional wedding photographers with a professional product. Although if you're not professional it certainly makes your work look professional. <laughs> yeah well exactly it's available to anybody so um, but the product that they're offering is um, you know I mean we, we still do a very good product ourselves but it's just something a little bit different in the marketplace at the moment that we're opening up to uh, the Australian clientele. Lot, Fantastic and it comes in different sizes? Many sizes here, yeah, 10-12s, 8-8s, A4s, 8-12s, multitude sizes. The beauty of it is is that a lot of people in Australia have dealt with White House colour before, but the shipping back to Australia becomes a bit of a factor. Um, with us, we're wearing the shipping, so there's no shipping cost. It's all absorbed in our price. It's good news for photographers. It's very good news, and it offers up a, you know, I mean, apart from the books, there's cards, there's a whole range of different products that are available. So. Beautiful. Now this is not the only yeah, service that uh, uh, Well, the Edge is still, you know, we regard ourselves as probably one of the better colour labs in Australia, and uh, we still do all our own stuff that we've done. It's just, well, your clientele's testament. Uh, oh, I'd hope so. <laughs> but, uh, yeah, so it's just in the marketplace at the moment. You have to be um, 
adaptable and open up different avenues, I think, to cope with who's coming into the marketplace. It's, it's changing every day, so... Can't just sit on now, this product can be found online through the Edge website. Online, online on our new website, there is a direct link to White House Colour. www.theedgephoto.com.au Fantastic. Thanks, Friday. I'm here at the Digital Show 2012 with Paul Curtis, the show organiser, the man who brings it all together. Good to see you, Michael. Good to see you too, Paul. Things Tell are going well. Things are going very well. Tell me. Everything's cool, calm and collected, but there are some really, really exciting things on the show floor. We've got gadgets like you wouldn't believe. Certainly. Certainly have. Now tell me, how many months goes into preparing something as big as this? Uh, well, as soon as we finish this one, we start on the next, so get your diaries out for the next one. Fantastic. It's always around the same time of year? Yes. Yes. Actually, because of generally we go to Sydney, we are reviewing that at the moment because they're rebuilding the Sydney Convention Centre, but we will be announcing the new dates and new venue in three weeks. Fantastic. And how many people are roughly expected to pass through the doors here? Uh, at an event like this in Melbourne, if it stops raining, uh, we would get more than 20,000 people. Fantastic. Fantastic. Now what would be uh, some of the highlights of the show that people should keep an eye out for? Well, I sort of look for odd things. I mean there's some fantastic developments from Nikon, Canon, but I think everybody knows all about those. It's looking to odd little corners and finding peculiar little things that really interest me. And on the Fuji stand, uh, which is quite enormous, there's a couple of very interesting products. There's a light table, which is the Windows compatible light table from Microsoft that we originally know. There's a new form and shape to that, which is really quite stunning. And But most interesting to me was 3D printing. Now, I'm not talking about 3D photographs. I'm actually talking about three-dimensional object printing. They have married a conventional kiosk that you would see in your local camera shop up with one of these magical 3D printers that works like a bit like a bubble jet printer. You, you know more about this than me, but instead of throwing ink, it's throwing plastic and it actually builds a 3D dimensional object right in front of you. You've probably got some footage of it. There's Fantastic. So we can have a look at this at the show. At the show. You can actually Beautiful. see it working. It's a magical process. The applications, I mean, I wouldn't like to be in the statue making business, uh, but why don't you make your pictures into statues? You remember years ago we used to have uh, the introduction of cutaway plastic figures. So you, people printed their photographs onto plastic and cut it out in the shape. That was considered fine, that was two dimensional. Now we've got the full depth of a figure, as your viewers can see, I'm sure. So something definitely worth having a look at? I think it's great fun, great fun. Uh, on the, uh, one of the boat booths down here, we've got a new gadget, you just pull out your iPhone, plonk it in, and out comes a thermal print designed for the home or in the photo store. It makes it very easy to get a print off your phone. And that's one of the things we're really passionate about. We love to see people print their photos. More photos are being taken than ever before. But the trouble is, they're stored on hard drives, CD, you know, on CDs, maybe CDs, wherever you put them. And I really worry about how you're going to open those files in 20 years. Uh, they might be up in the cloud. They might, and they keep those lovely computer banks, all of our pictures. Where are they? On the San Andreas Fault. I know there's backups. But there's nothing like having a print in your own hand. Certainly. An old school print, you can't go wrong. <laughs> Where will you find your images in 100 years? What about your legacy, your children? In up in the cloud. <laughs> That's where you'll be. <laughs> we'll be up there all together. <laughs> i tell you what, let's challenge your people to see where are their images that they took five years ago. Can they lay their hands on them? Uh, they could be buried somewhere in the cupboard. Hmm. In what sort of file format? Don't talk about JPEGs. Do you remember JPEGs back in the 2000s or something? In, in the year 2050, people won't know what that is. They won't, they won't. They might be back onto printing, do you think, by then? Uh, well, if you're trying, if you've got something, I'm not saying you've got to print everything, but when you've got something really fantastic, we all managed that. I did it once in 1962, and I made a print of it. <laughs> I know that I can pass that on to my grandchildren. And sure, I got the digital file. Sure, it's on my iPod. Sure, it's on here, there, there. But the print is something sacred about making a real print. Here you can see how you can print it on metal. So you can actually put the really special photo onto a big, large metal sheet. Now that, see? Survive a nuclear holoclast. <laughs> be fantastic. As you can see, there's a number of things to come and have a look at at the show. And Paul, how many years have you been running the show here? Um, some would say too long. I 
think it's about my 28th consecutive year. So fantastic. So this is the most exciting one. This is really is the best one. Also the last one I personally did, but this is the best one we've ever had. This is exciting technology here. It's amazing. So you're going out with a big bang, is it? That's pretty much what's happening. I'm just so pleased to see the imaging industry continually coming up with new ways of self-expression. It's the most fantastic thing. And you know these camera phones, they've been a real boom for us. Yeah. Because it's got everyone taking pictures. And when they see what they can create, then they get more excited and they buy the good cameras and get into more advanced technology. And really, we've got so many artists doing so many new things with our equipment. I just don't want to go. I think it's fantastic. Well, I'm sure you've got a few years left in you. You'll be able to hang around for a bit. <laughs> now you can sit back and you can actually just uh, come to the show and enjoy it like pretty much everyone else behind us here. I'll do my best. I'll do my best. Thanks for your time, Paul. Good on you.